Why is the story of Building 7 so important? Why do we spend so much time on it? Because the official story is that the two planes that hit Tower 1 and 2, the big 110-story buildings, caused them to collapse, even though a modern steel building had never collapsed from fire. But then we have Building 7 that was further away than any of the buildings in the complex that later in the afternoon got a few small fires in it and collapsed. Now they have almost rebuilt Building 7 on the exact same spot. And look, buildings right next to it, even though it collapsed on fire, didn't even get that much damage. And then we have this huge building that was right beside Tower 1 and 2 that was hit by giant chunks of the building that did catch on fire, but nothing collapsed. The difference between that building and the new Building 7 is that Larry Silverstein doesn't own that building. Larry Silverstein doesn't own the Millennium Hilton that was closer than Building 7. But every building he owned either caught on fire or mysteriously collapsed. There has been over a hundred uncontrolled fires in skyscrapers in the last 50 years. And never has one collapsed or come close to collapsing from fire. Only earthquakes and demolitions have brought these modern structures down. Then we look at the fires in Building 7, and they would be called moderate by any firefighting manual. But still, the building collapsed. Building 7 had sporadic fires in it for six hours. Other skyscrapers, as we mentioned, have burned for days or even weeks. Why don't they collapse? Because steel doesn't begin to weaken until after 2,000 degrees of temperature. Around 2,500 it becomes red hot and at around 3,000 degrees starts to melt. Another example of this was the Windsor Building in Madrid, Spain in mid-February of 2005. It burned for two days at temperatures much higher with white hot flames shooting out of it for hundreds of feet. As we watched the Windsor Building burn, I was amazed to watch the media of the world say, well, the World Trade Center towers and Building 7 fell from fire, so it's going to fall. We're just waiting for the collapse. But the collapse never came. All the major support pillars held fast. Steel doesn't melt at that temperature. According to official reports, Building 7 wasn't even in the debris field of Tower 1 and 2. And that's why it's important to look at buildings like Bankers Trust. We already talked about it earlier, but let's focus in on it with some detail. It was right up against the South Tower, only about 45 feet away, and large chunks of the South Tower fell directly in to Bankers Trust. But Bankers Trust is like all other modern steel buildings. It's like the big building in Madrid, Spain. Despite the fact that fires raged through many of its floors and that huge pieces of debris fell on top of it and up against it, it didn't collapse. The architect of the World Trade Center Towers, Nomuru Yamasaki, told the press many times before 9-11 that he specifically designed the towers to take massive passenger jetliner impacts. The construction and project manager for the World Trade Center complex, Frank Demartini, told the press multiple times that they designed the towers not to just take one large jetliner impact, but at least two and not collapse.